think I left my camera at home today. See one little toe hanging down there? It's clamping on the branch. Okay, so yep. is this a male or a female? I don't know. I think it's a female. Because I think I remember from that book I was just telling you about that in the boreal owls, there is the largest difference between the female and the female. And we are from the Raptor Education Group Incorporated, also known as Reggie, uh, from over in Anago, Wisconsin, where if you don't know where that is, it's kind of near Wausau, Wisconsin. Uh, now, Reggie was actually started in 1990 by Marge Gibson, who is our founder as well as our director. Uh, but she had actually done rehabilitation for many, many years in Southern California. Uh, when she decided to retire, she actually came back to Anago, which is where her family's from and uh, her parents were living. And when she started it, she actually just wanted to do education, thus the name Raptor Education Group. Uh, however, since she was a rehabber, just like the uh, movie Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come, people started bringing her birds for rehab, and she couldn't say no to them. And now we get anywhere from 500 to 800 birds every single year for rehabilitation. So it's definitely gotten very, very big. 
Uh, so we actually uh, have one of the largest flight cages uh, it, in the Midwest and even in the country. It's 110 feet long and uh, 50 feet tall. Uh, and it is uh, meant for our eagles, uh, for bald eagles, so we can get them back to strength in order for them to be released. Uh, or um, study peregrines, you know they want to move and they want to move fast. Um, so what he'll typically do is I'll pull them out of the box and he'll just start flapping and just start flying and trying to fly away. If there's peregrines when they want to go, uh, they want to go. So we'll go ahead and pull them out here and get them settled and then we'll be right back. to go, he wants to go. This is typical behavior for Ishmael. Uh, we'll get it back up. There you go. Still get settled down. Hey, buddy. So again, this is Ishmael. Um, he's an adult male peregrine falcon. And as everybody knows, peregrines are probably, you know, they are the fastest bird on the planet to die. Uh, peregrines have been clocked well over 200 miles an hour. Uh, so the cool thing about Ishmael is he was bred for a falconry bird. It's good to be flown uh, for the sport of falconry, but it just so happened he had something wrong with one of his feet. And in the sport of falconry, the whole goal is to catch something. Uh, if you don't really have good feet, you aren't going to catch anything. Uh, so, but with Ishmael's sister, she was actually one of the first peregrines to be reintroduced into the state of Wisconsin. But as pretty much everyone knows here, the peregrine. Um, did diminish in population. Anybody know the chemical that did that? Yeah, DDT, right? Um, so DDT is a you know major chemical in the bird world. Um, killed a lot of bald eagles and a lot of peregrines. And so um, one of the things we will do is we will ask to kind of hold your questions to the end since we do have a lot of birds to go through. Um, so if anybody has any burning questions about the specific species or about Ishmael himself, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, but kind of just questions overall about Reggie or about birds, uh, just hold off to the end and we'll pull a bunch of birds out at request for whatever guys you want to see at the end. Okay? And so we'll keep him on a little bow and have you get the next bird up. How old is the program, did you say? Yeah, Ishmael is 17. Wow. Yeah, he is one of the older peregrines. Um, and as you look, you know, 15 year olds old is old for a pair of men. So, and Abby, yep. <laughs> see, no jet products. Uh, Alright, so this is Aries. Ishmael, it's Aries' turn now. I know. Uh, so this is Aries, and she is a broad wing hawk. Yeah, she had one ear that was larger than the other one, uh, but we also think that she might have had West Nile virus. Um, so her, she had very big stress bars in her tail feathers, and that's why she actually just lost her tail feathers within the last couple months. I know, everybody's been in their box too long, so we like to move around. Um, as you can see, uh, for any of you who know much about broadwing hawks, they make terrible education birds. They're very high strung. Uh, Aries is special. She, uh, she's one of the calmest broadwing hawks I've ever worked with. Uh, it might have to do with the West Nile virus. If she did have that, it can affect their brain. Otherwise, from when she was born um, with that large ear, uh, that one ear that's larger than the other, she might have also had brain damage uh, as a baby. And she could have possibly been bumped out of the nest by her mom, uh, which is common when birds are born with birth defects. Uh, now, actually, West Nile virus um, is an interesting thing to talk about for us at Reggie because we were the first facility who decided to rehabilitate birds with West Nile virus. Every other rehabilitation center was putting them down. They were euthanizing them because they thought that even if they were able to recover from the West Nile virus, they would never be released. 
Well, we decided we had five bald eagles that actually recovered from West Nile virus. And so we were able to get a grant to put radio transmitters on those bald eagles to see that if once we released them, they would be able to survive. The radio transmitter, transmitters lasted 10 years. The eagles most likely lasted longer. Not a single one of those eagles died. And we did actually see that for definitely one of those eagles did go out, make a nest, and actually had babies um, year after year. So it was a great recovery program. And ever since then, now rehabilitation centers have started to uh, rehabilitate birds that have had West Nile virus. West Nile virus. So. Uh, We'll get to our next bird, commonly seen around here, but possibly not in this color phase. So this was actually requested for this weekend that we bring her. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, I hear a lot of oohs and ahs. <laughs> yeah. So this is Adka. And Atka's a dark-faced, rough-legged hawk. So, um, Atka was found in northern Wisconsin. Um, she was originally struck by a vehicle, and the people who found her on the side of the road decided, oh, hey, I can take care of this bird. So, um, <laughs> that's not a good idea. Uh, so, the people that found her held her for about five days. Uh, they fed her beef, venison, uh, trout, and Gatorade. <laughs> so she had an original broken right wing. You can see it here. It'll start to droop um, as she starts to move around and she's out a little bit more. Uh, she's pretty nervous because she doesn't go out on a lot of programs. This is probably only her first or second program. Uh, but she's, she does pretty good. Uh, but the thing we really want to take away from Atka's story is don't if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. <laughs> it's kind of common sense, but you think a lot of people would get that, but um, it just doesn't happen. So you really have to be an expert at, at what you're doing. Um, and the way if you do happen to find an injured raptor on the side of the road, um, legally you can't hold it for more than 24 hours. Um, then you're violating laws. Um, so we do give out, you know, like pamphlets and stuff. Uh, the best way is to get a cardboard box, just like we transport our birds in. Get a cardboard box, put a towel on the bottom of it, catch the bird with a towel, um, because again, these are raptors and they do have a pretty nice set of claws on them. Um, catch the bird with a towel, put them in there, uh, put the towel over the top of the box and transport them like that. Don't feed them, don't try to water them or give them Gatorade. Um, that's called a rouse. For those of you who don't know, that's a sign of comfort. So. There, we do have transporters that live in Minnesota, live in Wisconsin, live all over the state. Um, so if you call us and say, I have an injured bird near wherever town, we'll call the closest person and they'll take it and transport it. And possibly it'll jump through three, four people before it gets to us. Um, we can get it to us and, and get it help. Okay? So this is Atka. Um, and dark face, rough like it. So I'll give her the back to A little bit more about Agka. Um, as we mentioned, that the people who found her, they had her for five days. So by the time they got her to us, uh, unfortunately her wing had already started to heal, and their bones uh, healed very, very quickly. Um, and so she might have had a chance of being released. In fact, we reevaluated her over and over again, because if you look at her, it's hard to tell that anything's wrong. Um, in fact, we had her as an education bird, decided we thought she was releasable, and then again, we're very strict about what we release. That bird has to be perfect, has to be 100% healthy before we're going to release it. Um, and so that's one of the best ways to, or one of the best lessons to always get that bird to us as quickly as possible, because it definitely helps in the release rate. Um.